Hi, this is Dave Johnson with another edition of Math Off Topics. Today, what I'd like to do is motivate the definition of the Laplace transform. So let's get into it. So here I'm showing the definition of the Laplace transform, transforming f of t. And to do that, we evaluate an integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative st times f of t dt. This is a one-sided integral from zero to infinity, and so one-sided transform. The kernel, notice how I spell the word kernel, K-E-R-N-E-L, which is kind of the, the center, is e to the negative st. And what I want to show today is why it's e to the negative st. And to do that, we're going to use one of the properties of the Laplace transform. Uh, but in order to not prejudice our derivation in any way, instead of using L, I'm going to use big T. And instead of using E to the negative ST, I'm going to use an arbitrary kernel K of S comma T. And we want to show that K has to be this function. So how are we going to do that? Well, the property that we're going to use is uh, the transform of the derivative, so let's say f prime of t, brings out the s, and so we get s times t of the original function, f of t. Okay, so let's go ahead and write that as s times our integral from 0 to infinity, k of s comma t f of t dt and also we can write that um, i'm going to rewrite the derivative here a little bit so f of f prime becomes df dt and let's plug that in and we get the integral from zero to infinity of k of s comma t times df dt dt. So before we go any further, let's go ahead and evaluate this integral uh, using integration by parts. You all know how to do that from calculus two, I hope. So this we're going to let this be our u, and this is going to be our dv. And if the dt's cancel, then dv is equal to df which is nice, and so V is equal to F. U is equal to K, so DU is the partial of K with respect to T times DT. And we remember that when we're using integration by parts, we get UV evaluated between the limits, zero to in, in infinity, minus the integral from zero to infinity of V DU, and so let's go ahead and write that. So we get uh, UV, which is K of S comma T times F of T evaluated between zero and infinity minus the integral from zero to infinity of V times du, well, I'll write the du first, so partial k with respect to t times f times dt. And now this integral, or th th this side here, so this integral, it has to equal this integral, so this has to equal this, so let me go ahead and write that, and at the same time, let me go ahead and pull in the the s inside the integral. So this is equal to the integral from zero to infinity, s times k of s comma t times f of t dt. Okay. Now this is where it gets a little sticky. And so I'm going to go a little slower and make sure we're all on the same page here. So what I want to do is be able to set the integrand for this integral equal to the integrand for this integral. 
We can do that if we have two integrals that are equal. And if that's the case, then the integrands are generally going to be equal. So we have a little bit of a problem here. We've got this term, which it turns out is a constant um, because we're evaluating it at infinity and zero. Now, just to be clear, we probably want to take care of that infinity somehow. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume that the limit as t goes to infinity of k of s comma t times f of t is equal to zero. And it turns out that this is equivalent to assuming that f is of exponential order. Now, if you're not already familiar with exponential order, don't worry. It's All it means is that uh, f can't grow any faster than your kernel decays. In fact, the kernel has to decay faster than f grows so that in the limit, the result of the product is zero. And that guarantees that your integral, your transform integral is going to converge. Okay. So this is known as uh, requiring that f is of exponential order. And we, I guess we don't really need that for what we're going to do, um, except at the very end. So, but in the meantime, so this is a constant with respect to uh, S. And we've already established that when you uh, evaluate at infinity, it must be zero. So let me write the other, the lower limit. and. Uh, because we're subtracting, I need to write this as minus k of s comma zero times f of zero, and then minus those integral the, the integral from zero to infinity partial k with respect to t times f dt, and this is going to equal the integral from zero to infinity of s times k times f dt. Okay. Now we want to, we, we actually want this here for now because it's going to turn out that that's going to allow us to figure out what the constant is when we use the, tra the Laplace transform to do a derivative. So, uh, but now we can differentiate both sides. So let me write that d by dt both sides. Now, why are we doing that? Well, if we, if we differentiate with respect to t across the board, first term is 0. Then we're taking the derivative of, of this integral with respect to t and the, the uh, derivative of this integral with respect to t. And by the fundamental theorem of calculus, uh, that will make the integral go away, and we'll just have the integrand left evaluated at the upper limit. Now, in order to make this work, we have to remember that this is an improper integral. And because we're evaluating um, at infinity, we need to take the limit as, say, t goes to infinity. So we would actually, if we were doing this very formally, we'd have a limit in front here as t goes to infinity, and then have a t as the upper limit. And we'd, we'd have to do that on this side as well. And so I believe it is the case, and I'm going to appeal to any professional mathematicians who are watching, if you know this for, for sure, you can share this in the comments. I'll be happy to hear any thoughts you have on this subject. But I think that as long as the integral, or whatever this function is, is uniformly continuous, then when you have a derivative of a limit, you can exchange those and have the limit of the derivative. And so you can then have your, um, um, 
your your integrand by itself and do that on both sides. And so, so therefore, I'm going to set these two integrands equal. And let me go ahead and bring the minus sign from here inside this integral. And so we get negative, and I'm going to treat this as a total derivative, dk dt times f times dt is equal to s times k times f times dt. The f and dt's will cancel, and now we have an easy differential equation to solve. And I can write that, separate variables, we get dk over k is equal to negative st. Integrate both sides, we get ln k is equal to, uh, that's supposed to be a dt. So equals, uh, negative st plus some constant. And if I exponentiate both sides base e, we get k is equal to e to the negative st plus c, but I can rewrite that as some new constant c e to the negative st. Now let's go ahead and choose, we're not done yet, although it looks like we've proven what we want to prove. In other words, the kernel has to be uh, this exponential. And interestingly, it's some multiple of the exponential. So let's choose c equal to 1. And I think what's, what would happen is, let's say we chose another property of the Laplace transform and impose that, we could get a requirement on c. But I'm not going to do that right now. So let's just assume that c is equal to 1. And now, um, so our k of s comma t is equal to e to the negative st. And we're going to need, we need the, this k of s comma zero. So let's go ahead and evaluate k of s comma zero. So t is zero, so e to the zero is, is one. So now, let's remember what this expression was. So going back to here, what was that? Well, that was our um, transform of the derivative. So what this is saying is that the transform of the derivative is equal to this. Okay. And so... Let me write that down. So the transform of the derivative, t of f prime of t, is equal to um, negative, now k of s comma 0 is 1, and then times f of 0. And then minus the integral and I'm going to go ahead and write it this way, the integral from zero to infinity of the partial of k with respect to t times f dt. We're almost there. Now let's compute uh, the partial of k with respect to t, which is equal to negative s e to the negative st. And let's plug that in. So we get t of f prime of t is equal to uh, negative f of 0 minus the integral from 0 to infinity, negative s e to the negative st times f dt. And simplify, so f of 0 plus, and let's bring the s outside because s is a constant with respect to t. So s times the integral from 0 to infinity 
of e to the negative st times f of t dt. And we will recall that this is actually our t of f of t. And so if I switch the order on, on these, this and, and this times that, we get that t of f of t is equal to uh, s times t of f of t minus f of zero. And this is exactly the Laplace transform property that we were hoping for. So uh, not only did we show that the um, not only did we show that the kernel was e to the negative st, we also showed that this constant had to be negative f of zero, and we had the added um, requirement that the f be of exponential order. So that's a lot for one small little derivation like this. So I hope this has been helpful. Hope you've enjoyed it. And if so, uh, please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.